I want to talk about something serious because it's the new year and we're going to get you in the kitchen. Look how serious I am. I'm drinking my serious coffee in this serious mug. <sighs> Gross. Oh, try me, bitch. But yeah, I know you have not been cooking and I know that ordering from Postmates is so nice, especially to have food on the way, but we're going to get you out of that rut and cooking your own meals at home because there are so many reasons for you to be cooking your own meals. First off, there's gonna be no preservatives. It's gonna taste amazing. You're gonna save money. There's gonna be more nutrition. And you know how easy it is to get a date when you can say that you made this croquem bush by yourself, let alone know how to pronounce it? Hey, have you heard about Gerald over there? I heard he made that dessert all by himself from scratch. Mm hmm. Yeah. No box. Oh. Yeah, so let's get into it. So my first tip is to create a stress-free environment because I know cooking can be overwhelming and I don't want you to get stressed out when things take longer or there's bumps in the road and now your New York cousins are yelling at you because your souffle deflated. Come on, my cousin Tony in the Bronx makes better stuff than this and he don't even got an oven. Can you, can you guys tell I've never been in New York? One of the ways you can make cooking less stressful is to block enough time for you to account for any hiccups that might happen along the way. If you're gonna make a broccoli and cheddar soup and you've never had to like melt cheese into a soup before, that might take you an extra 30 minutes just to figure out. Another thing I also like to do is I like to play music, I like to light a candle, maybe even get a little tipsy. Really just do whatever you want to make a relaxing and fun environment. This tip is all about taking your negative apprehensions about the kitchen and turning it into an environment that like you want to be a part of. Tip number two, make your favorite meals. I know this tip sounds pretty obvious, but make food that you're gonna eat. Just because you made a green bean casserole doesn't mean you're gonna all of a sudden like it, like just like that. Also, if you already know that you're gonna like the food that you're gonna make, it gives you more incentive to get into the kitchen and make it yourself. It's much easier to jump over that hill of laziness to motivate you to cook it if you know you're already gonna like your food. You know how much motivation it takes for me to make a kale salad? I need like a pre-workout for that to happen. If you don't know what to cook, usually what I do is literally just think of what I wanna eat that day and then I just go look for a recipe for it. Tip number three, invest in better tools. If you have better tools, cooking does not seem as much of a chore anymore. Trying to cut like a tomato with a dull knife makes me near suicidal. So do yourself a favor and get some better tools. If you can only invest in one tool, I highly suggest you use uh, you invest in a chef knife. Most other tools, you can find something else that will work in its place. But if you're bound to one dull kitchen knife, then it'll really hinder you and your ability to move through a recipe. And it doesn't even have to be an expensive one, honestly. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a more in-depth tutorial on how to buy a knife. But for now, just go to your local kitchen store and just ask them in their opinion what they think is a good knife. But the number one thing that I want you to do is hold it. Firmly grasp it. Literally just hold, ask if you can hold the knife and see how it feels in your hand. It should feel pretty balanced. It shouldn't feel too heavy or too light. Uh, you don't want any of that wonkiness because it's really gonna affect how you cook. Like, I bought a Victorinox chef knife maybe like six years ago or something like that. And it's probably still one of my most used knives and it's not even my most expensive one. Tip number three and a half is customize your stuff. Now this entire like tip section is all about ownership of your tools because when you have good tools that you really feel proud to own, it just makes you feel so much better using them. And one of my favorite ways to do that is to actually customize your stuff. You can customize your bags, your apron, your hat. My favorite thing is to customize knives. And let me show you this one. And I love to customize it by engraving it. If you can see, it says Papi on it. Papi. I actually got this knife from my Drop Dead Gorgeous Brazilian chef for Christmas. And yeah, he might have like gotten the same exact knife for everyone, but I'm pretty sure he wanted to give it just to me. But then was like, oh, well, I don't want to play favorite, so I got to buy five other knives to make sure ever no one feels left out. But I know, chef. I know. Thank you guys so much for watching my video, and if you found these tips useful, press that like button like a juicy burger. Until next time, PEACE! 
Also, subscribe. I forgot that part.